This is Dan Dix here reporting for Press for Truth. The former drama teacher, Justin Trudeau, has just played host to the former actor, Vladimir Zelensky, in Canada. And get a load of the reception they received from Canadians uh, here at the Royal York Hotel in Toronto. Uh, needless to say, they're pretty upset. <laughs> This goes on, needless to say, for like three minutes straight, and it's just uh, Canadians voicing their absolute displeasure with these two complete clowns as Justin Trudeau welcomes Zelensky into uh, Toronto. Um, listen to this, this psycho introduce Zelensky in this speech, saying that we absolutely must win this war. Just listen closely here. Canadians know this is a question of right or wrong. Canadians know that, yes, it is incredibly hard for Ukraine to continue to stand against a Russian aggression. And let's be honest, it's hard for the democracies around the world who are there to support their citizens, who are investing for the future, who are challenged with a challenging economy around the world to continue to step up as Canada has with close to nine billion dollars in aid for Ukraine, but we will because the cost on Canadians, on our lives, on our world will be so much greater if Putin wins this war that we will and have to stand every single day until Ukraine wins this war. Oh, calm down there, madman. Uh, this is absolutely insane. And yes, you did hear those figures correctly. Uh, the Canadian people have given over billions of dollars and now Zelensky in a speech says never submit to evil as uh, Trudeau just vowed 650 million dollars more of the Canadian people's money is going to be going to Ukraine by the way that Christia Freeland here is hugging this man you'd think that the money is going the other way around it's absolutely insane ladies and gentlemen now as we said as you saw People are royally upset with both of these men. And it's funny that he would mention never submit to evil when he himself, Zelensky, just asked Mariana Abramovic to be an ambassador for Ukraine. Guys, if you don't know who this woman is, she is a an evil, wicked witch, essentially. This is what she looks like at the age of 76, yes, this is the spirit cooking queen, Mariana, uh, uh, how do you say it, um, Ambromovic, who is uh, now invited to be the ambassador for Ukraine. So we're going to take a look at just who this vile, wicked woman is and why someone like Vladimir Zelensky would want to appoint her as an ambassador in Ukraine. Guys, we're going to cover all of this and much, much more in this video. But really quickly, just before we do, I'd ask that you check me out here at pressfortruth.ca slash donate if you appreciate my efforts to bring you this information. Guys, here you can do a one-time donation with uh, PayPal. Uh, you can contribute Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Um, you can join me on Subscribestar uh, by clicking there. Um, you can send an e-transfer to dan at pressfortruth.ca or you can send stuff to my P.O. Box, guys. Links for all of this are located in the description below. Thank you so much to everybody who does take some time and effort today to support my work here at Press for Truth. All right, guys, so we have this clown right here um, welcoming and hosting uh, th this guy. Th this is an image that I, I wish I, I, I didn't see, and I'm sorry to have had to have put that into uh, your heads as well, but uh, th these, these are the men that we're dealing with here. He says, never submit to evil, as he urges in a, in a speech to Canadians, as Trudeau just vowed $650 million more to be going to Ukraine. Um, Slava Ukraini, a voice shouted as Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky entered the Chamber of House of Commons to give his historic address to Canadians. Uh, Zelensky appeared to wipe a tear away as he was met with a minute-long standing ovation before Trudeau gave his welcoming speech emphasizing the pivotal moment facing the world and pledging $650 million in new funding to support Ukraine over the next three years. In his speech, Zelensky focused on the necessi necessity to never submit to evil, he says, and he began by uh, talking about the construction of the world's first 
Haldemir Monument in Edmonton in 1983. Again, interesting he should say, never submit to evil, when we are now reading from the London Telegraph that Zelensky is inviting Mariana Abramovic to be an ambassador for Ukraine. Again, this is the woman who was known for uh, spirit cooking. Uh, the, you know, the practice of, of having a, a, an effigy of a body or sometimes a model who's, you know, pretending to be a fake, you know, dead person uh, lying there so they can uh, uh, dine and feast off of uh, the dead. Um, this is, um, this is what, what we're dealing with. Uh, you know, she's a, called an artist, uh, but her art is uh, obviously rather uh, satanic quite evil indeed. Um, here she is showing herself engaging in satanic rituals. I mean, lying down in the center of a, of a massive pentagram there, holding a decapitated goat's head and her own head in some sort of voodoo ritual, you know, showing her one-eye allegiance to the Illuminati type stuff. You know, she's like this horned beast who's involved in these secret societies and just quite literally an evil wicked human being who have uh, taught the elite uh, on how to uh, gain access uh, to the uh, spiritual realm and to gain uh, power and, and money and, and, and control and all these sorts of things. Uh, that's what her task is amongst these global elitists. So here we have Zelensky inviting her to be the ambassador to Ukraine. Like, this should be sending off some pretty major alarm bells. Vladimir Zelensky has asked Mariana Abramovic, to, the performance artist, to be an ambassador for Ukraine. Ms. Abramovic, a fierce critic of Vladimir uh, Putin's illegal invasion, said the Ukrainian president had asked her for help in rebuilding schools. <laughs> Is this the kind of woman that you want anywhere near your children or, you know, young Kids in Ukraine? I think not. The 76-year-old Serbian is holding her first solo exhibition in the UK and is the first female artist to have a major show in the main galleries of the Royal Academy of Arts in London. Visitors of the exhibition must squeeze between two nude models to enter the show, or they can opt to bypass what one journal journalist dubbed the naked gates. I was the first artist to support the Ukraine war against Russia and to give my voice. It is definitely a repetition of history, she said in an interview with the Modern Art Museum in Shanghai. I have been invited by Zelensky to be an ambassador of Ukraine to help the children affected by rebuilding schools and such. Again, the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, uh, just invited this evil, wicked witch to help build schools in Ukraine. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. I mean, it's just absolutely wild that this is going on. Um, again, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, Trudeau is a former drama teacher. He's hosting this former actor. Uh, in case you didn't know, uh, this man is, is literally an actor. Uh, he comes from the uh, acting world. In fact, he had a, a lead character on a TV show that was very popular there in Ukraine where he played the role as president of Ukraine. And then all of a sudden he quits his acting career and actually becomes the real president. It's like full-blown propaganda conditioning in the minds of, of the people there in Ukraine. I pointed that out once uh, back in this video. Um, uh, where I talked about who is the real Volodymyr Zelensky. Who is he really? And uh, look at this piece I found um, from um, a while back that the BBC put together showing his former acting career as a president turning into the uh, real world scenario. Check this out. This is crazy. Здрасте. Василий Петрович Голобородько? Да. Доброе утро, господин президент. Again, this is the actor Zelensky playing the role as president. And now he's engaging in politics in real life. They literally thought it was fake and a joke.
И вот здесь, понимаешь? Теперь, сука, они заставляют... Here he is, acting in the, in the show. Знаешь, почему у нас жизнь собачья? Да потому что мы свой выбор с тобой начинаем в будках. Понятно? А вы and, 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 this is funny. The scene is like a student secretly recording him as he's ranting about Ukraine's corrupt political system. So, you know, the, the fans of the show just love this guy uh, for, for what he stands for. And then they morph it into real life. It, it's just crazy that people are following this. You know Right. His dead to win is like a reality show. Sport, if you want to learn the Ukrainian language. Первая причина, конечно же, они хотели бы видеть президента That's такого человека, как Василий Голобородько, с такими, самое главное, моральными see? ценностями. This is crazy! А, People want to see, you know, a real president, just like that character that I played. А второе, э, конечно же, это ответ They're всему the политическому They want establishment. New. А, а, люди хотят что-то новое. А я тут ни при чем. Перестаньте. Мы же все понимаем, что это твой человек. Нет. Я был уверен, что Голобородько – это твой человек. Ясно. Если не твой, so he, he defies the rich oligarchs, you know, the powerful, the, the elite. Uh, in reality, of course, he's accused of being a billionaire's puppet. Look at him on this TV show. And he's been, you know, used in his acting career for many, many purposes. And now, of course, He's been made the face of uh, this war. And again, this, uh, this piece shows, again, how he, his, his uh, acting background, how he played the role of president. It was seeded into the minds of the uh, Ukrainian people um, that they would want someone like this in the future. And then he actually enters into politics and becomes the president of Ukraine. Absolutely insane, guys. Uh, be sure you check this one out if you haven't seen it. I also want to uh, refer you to this one because I put a lot of time and effort into this one. The truth about Russian aggression in Ukraine. Um, in this video, I go behind the headlines, delving into the history of Ukraine and Russia's relationship with NATO, the US and their allies to reveal a situation that looks nothing like what the MSM is presenting. Turn off your TVs, stop being conditioned for war, and support real independent media like Press for Truth. So I'm gonna end, uh, leave you today, guys, uh, with that video. Uh, you know, if, if you haven't seen it, it's a really important one to understand uh, just exactly what's at play today. And you know, if you have seen it, you know, it's been well over a year now. There's a lot of information contained in the video. Maybe you'll learn new things that you missed, or you can see just how well the video has aged as all these things are still currently true today. So I'm gonna leave you with that. But before we do, guys, I wanna ask you once again to uh, uh, check me out at pressfortruth.ca slash donate. Again, if you do appreciate my efforts to bring you this information, links for all that are located in the description below. And uh, that's all for today, guys. Uh, once again, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Uh, click the thumbs up button, share this video. And um, here's a video I put out a little over a year ago now called The Truth About Russian Aggression in Ukraine. Check it out. This is Dan Dix here reporting for Press for Truth. The federal liberal government has just announced that they are strengthening more sanctions towards individual Russians due to Russia's so-called aggression towards Ukraine. Ahead of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's address to Parliament, Canada announced it is imposing sanctions on 15 more individuals who the federal government says have enabled and supported President Putin's choice to invade a peaceful and sovereign country. The MSM and major tech conglomerates are quick to add insult to injury, as we see here. Exclusive, Facebook and Instagram to temporarily allow calls for violence against Russians. Meta platforms will allow Facebook and Instagram users in some countries to call for violence against Russians and Russian soldiers in the context of the Ukraine invasion, according to internal emails seen by Reuters on Thursday in a temporary change to its hate speech policy. 
And as if that wasn't bad enough, check this out. Breaking, Ukrainian television broadcasts a segment advocating the extermination of all Russians, starting with Russian children. It quotes Nazi Adolf Eichmann, who carried out the Holocaust. In order to destroy a nation, you must destroy, first of all, children. So how did we get to this point where the West is frothing at the mouth and ready to incite violence against Russia, and the Ukrainians are ready to start killing Russians, including children? Well, in order to understand the media manipulation that's happening today, we must first look at Ukraine and how the media has already manipulated its history in regards to its relationship with Russia. Back in 1990, the Soviet Union agreed to let East Germany escape Soviet control. And the agreement was that NATO would not push east into the former Soviet satellites. The agreement was that there would always be a buffer zone between the West and Russia. Well, despite agreeing to this exchange, the US and NATO broke their pledge almost immediately. And NATO is now in Eastern Europe, the Baltic states, the Caucasus, and Central Asia. And the US-led alliance has literally been creeping up against Russia's border all this time. US anti-missile systems are in Poland, and new US bases have been set up in Bulgaria and Romania and Central Asia. And yet, Russia is supposed to be the aggressor here? It seems clear to me that NATO has become the Fourth Reich. And please don't get me wrong, Russia and Putin are certainly not perfect. After a previous war with Chechnya, which left the former USSR embarrassed, Putin used a second war with Chechnya in order to make himself look like a strong leader. And one of the ways that he got support from the Russians to fight against the Chechnyan separatists was to commit false flag attacks. The FSB, which is like Russia's CIA, blew up apartment buildings and blamed it on Chechnya. Residents had actually called the police on two suspicious men who dropped off packages in the basement of a building. The bomb squad was called and an explosive called RDX was found, which was meant to take down the entire building. Then the roads were shut down, a huge manhunt ensued and the two men were caught and they turned out to be the FSB. At first, they said they were testing the police's vigilance, but then later it came out that this was just a training exercise. So we can see the parallels between Western leaders and Putin because both of them use false flag attacks to increase their power. The CIA and the FSB seem to be governments unto themselves. So Putin is certainly no angel, but if you get all your information solely from the mainstream media, you will believe that Putin is the devil, the US is God, and intervention is absolutely necessary, of course, all under the guise of a humanitarian mission. This, of course, is not true, but if we were to entertain this idea, why should Canada intervene? What is it about Putin's leadership that interferes with the daily lives of Canadians? The answer is, it doesn't. The fact is, NATO is not equipped to go to war over Ukraine, and the Russians have home turf advantage. And no one in Europe, aside from maybe a few Ukrainian nationalists, want a war with Russia. The loudest voices for war are the neocons in Washington and Ottawa, who, of course, are separated by about 8,000 kilometers of mostly ocean. And not to mention, it's not going to be Trudeau or Biden going to war but rather it will be the brave men and women who have sadly been brainwashed and conditioned into thinking this is a humanitarian mission and that they're fighting for our freedoms. The truth is, there are no economic benefits to having any kind of sanctions on Russia. In fact, all this does is it hurts Canadian exporters and it targets individual Russian citizens. There is no national security risk from Russia. Ukraine is just simply not a place that's worth going to war over right now. What if Ukraine could just exercise self-determination? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Wouldn't that be more democratic? Instead, we have these so-called democratic Western leaders promoting their version of their militarized form of democracy. It's the same vision that they had for Egypt and Libya and Iraq. And just look how well those thriving democracies are doing. The fact is the US and NATO took an internal Ukrainian conflict and by intervening on the side of anti-Russian Ukrainians, they made a mountain out of a molehill. And they've also incited what could potentially become a nuclear showdown between the West and Russia. 
But just like any wounded animal who's backed into a corner, the Russian bear can be vicious. We have to remember that Russia is a nuclear powerhouse and the globalist infiltration of China isn't exactly rock solid. There is a power dynamic between the West and the East and our Western leaders have been on top for so long that they're now getting cocky and dangerous. And of course, my friends, while the true power lies within the banking dynasty, who has funded and armed both sides of this conflict, there's no money to be made and no power vacuums to be filled without conflict. The global elite now depend on the West hating Russians and the Russians hating the West. So as Canadians or Americans or wherever you reside, unless the individual masses make their voices heard, that we will not put up with these wars of aggression, we are just gonna simply sit on the sidelines and be a part of the problem. And one of the best things you can do right now is to stop being brainwashed by the mainstream media who have become expert liars and manipulators of information. And instead, start supporting real independent media like Press for Truth, who's not afraid to counter all the propaganda and to bring you the truth of what's actually happening. Please, my friends, click that thumbs up button and share this video with your friends and family who you think need to see it the most. And if you appreciate my efforts to bring you this information, please consider making a donation or contributing as a member at pressfortruth.ca slash donate. That's it for today, my friends. Thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned. We're going to have more video reports coming soon. This is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth. We all want truth. truth. The truth will set you free. free, free.